This program is powered by the virtual dot show, making your offline events virtual. Ladies and gentlemen, the host of Web at Virtual, Dr. Plamen Russo. Hello and welcome back to the special part, the closest one to my heart, where we have the best of the best startups who have applied for our uh, COVID-19 startup, global startup challenge for health security, and uh, also a fine selection of the Founders Games startups, where we're hosting the world's biggest startup challenge with over 4,500 uh, applicants from all around the world, $1 million awards. And I have the pleasure now to first present to you the, the jury that, who will help us select out of these three selected startups, the best one, who will have the, 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 the award of 1 million, joining the Founders Games uh, contest with $1 million award and uh, receiving free exhibition stand at Webet and having the, um, the opportunity to be with us there. So I would like to welcome here with us um, Ali Madhavji, Andreas Ser, Tatiana Slianko, and Giuseppe Donagema. Can you please uh, join us here in our virtual studio? Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, Pleasure to be here. Thank you for joining. Thank you. For I, will, I will take to time to everybody. speak with you after the panel because now we have work to do and um, we shall be presenting a little bit of um, your know how, etc., during our discussions after the startup speech. In the meantime, I would like to uh, request immediately here on the stage the first startup who will present in front of us. This is the OmniLabs, and with us will be Tuk Vu. OmniLabs is a Silicon Valley based robotics company focused on providing demand driven robotic solutions for businesses. Um, they have been um, uh, doing quite some great job with a number of rounds already raised, and um, let's see what they have to tell us. You know the rules, three minutes each start, I'm uh, present presenting and three minutes Q&A. So may the pitch start now. Hello everyone, it's a great honor to be here. Uh, my name is Tuk and I'm the CEO and co-founders of Omni Labs. So as we all know, social distancing is the best thing we can do to have flatten the curve during this pandemic. But this led to many challenges, including isolation, loneliness, and decreased productivity. However, this doesn't need to be our new novel. Introducing Omni, our telepresent robot that uh, help take away the physical distance. User can dive into Omni remotely, uh, drive around in a space like home, hospital, or office, and have two-way video and audio communication. Uh, let me move this. Okay, here you go. <laughs> uh, so people can dive in remotely, drive around in a space like home, hospital, office, and have two-way audio and video communication. It's like Zoom on wheel, uh, but the user have complete control of the device in real time. With Omni, you can check in anytime, uh, spend time with your loved ones virtually, just like you're there in person. Many hospitals have been using our robots to connect uh, COVID-19 patients in quarantine with their families. No need for nurses or doctors to hold a tablet or a computer. So this creates a much more engaging and natural interaction and also helps reduce the cross, the cross contamination risk for both family members and the healthcare personnel on the front line. We can also integrate Omni with wearable device uh, to measure vital signs and allow nurses and doctors to check in remotely. Um, to monitor the conditions of COVID-19 patients without exposure risk. We can integrate Omni with UV light adapters uh, to help with disinfecting surfaces or hospital rooms as well. Among all of us in the society, um, let me try to go, <laughs> sorry, the, uh, the slide transition is a bit, uh, um, okay, here we go. So, among all of us in the society, seniors are the most vulnerable and at risk during this pandemic. They have high mortality rates if infected, but social distancing causes isolation and loneliness, and that has a huge negative impact on their well being as well. However, with Omni, families and caregivers can easily check in regularly and spend time with the seniors 
uh, to give them the companionship they need without the added risk. And we have seen Omni being used in many, many other situations as well, uh, such as remote education, virtual tourism, uh, telecommuting, and even remote virtual graduation. Uh, the uh, photos of the graduation have gone quite viral uh, over the internet. Uh, we have had significant traction so far uh, with one life set on, over the robot. Uh, the robot has been being used in 14 hospitals in the US and deployed in 28. Thank you. Uh, sorry for interrupting you, but it's the rules are three minutes, so you will be able to to continue your presentation hopefully during the uh, the Q and A session with uh, our investors panel. So who would like to start yeah. first with the questions? No, I can Bye. start. <laughs> Ladies first. Oh, thank you a lot. Um, thank you very much for the uh, presentation. Um, I, I was primarily interested, you know, knowing how competitive market is. Mm -hmm. uh, how are you dealing with the competition? How are you differentiating yourself from other, from the competitors? And actually, what are you looking for? Because we haven't reached the, your ask. Thank you. Thank you, Tatiana. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you for the question. And uh, so we have a couple of other competitors in the market, uh, but uh, we have designed our robot from the ground up uh, to really fit into an environment such as home or hospital. Mm -hmm. And so we designed to uh, protect the, uh, for example, uh, the user privacy and security, right? And our robots are very designed to be, you know, very easy, intuitive to control. Uh, you know, you don't need to install any software. Basically, you just go uh, to a website link uh, to our website and you can immediately uh, start controlling the robot. Um, like all of these little things added uh, make a much better user experience for both the local user and the remote user. Um, and then uh, in terms of what we're looking for, uh, we're really looking for partners uh, to help us, you know, bring the, this technology uh, to the hand of user. You know, for example, uh, patients uh, in quarantine or the elderly uh, who are um, at home and, you know, feeling isolated or lonely. Questions? Yeah, uh, uh, I'll go ahead. So, uh, so, so first off, I mean, uh, great presentation. I mean, very, very useful and something that I think many of us would want for, for people that we know. Um, what is the biggest challenge that you're facing during COVID and how has your supply chain and logistics been impacted during this period? Uh, great questions. Uh, so when COVID-19 uh, hit, uh, every business got uh, affected and including us. Uh, but, you know, very, so we based in uh, California, uh, Silicon Valley. And uh, in fact, we manufacture in Silicon Valley. This is very rare for a robotics company. The way that we managed to do this is because we 3D print uh, our robotics. Uh, we're using lean manufacture with uh, 3D printing. So we 3D print the robots part and then we assemble them all in-house in California. So yes, in the beginning, uh, the, our supply chain uh, got hit, uh, our capacity got hit, uh, but very quickly we, we will be able to ramp up to the normal capacity. Thank you. The next uh, question. Can I ask you? Yeah, something about regarding your business model, how you make money, and specifically, uh, it looks like a very capital intensive business because you need a lot of hardware. So, how are you going to face that? Uh, yes, so uh, in fact, I'm glad you asked because the way that we are uh, producing right now, uh, we rely on lean manufacturing. So, basically, just in time order. So, when people put in the order, then we'll start uh, producing the robot. Um, and so, you know, we can customize the robot to the demand or needs of our clients or partners. Uh, so this is another, uh, you know, uh, advantage that we have. Um, and so in terms of uh, capacity or like capital required, uh, we do not need a large, you know, overhead uh, capital. And for the business model right now, we're selling our robot at around $2,200 for the base model per robot, uh, which is, you know, very, very reasonable. Um, and this robot is very lightweight. Uh, you can fold it, so you can actually uh, ship it, you know, around different locations uh, if you have multiple hospital or care facilities. Thank you so much. We were uh, over the, the four minutes for Q&A, but um, I wanted to make sure that um, we have our investors well informed. 
the, the flagship of, um, of the Omni Labs is the Omni Robot award-winning uh, telepresence robot. Uh, it really transforms people connect from their homes, businesses, classrooms, and hospitals. Um, you have uh, raised a number of rounds. I'm not sure if this is publicly announced, but it's, um, it's, um, it's a, a number that gives you uh, the opportunity to grow. Uh, you may mention it if you wish um, at the end. So um, I think that's overall uh, so far. Thank you so much for being with us and stay Thank with you. us because uh, yeah. we will know the winner uh, mm -hmm. in, yeah. uh, in, in, in a second. So I would like now to quickly introduce the, the jury. Ali is a managing partner at Blockchain Founders Fund, uh, which invests uh, in um, uh, top tier startups and he's consulting organizations such as UN, LP in Loyal VC and others. He's senior blockchain fellow in INSEAD. Andreas is a partner in the Emerging Ventures Capital Fund called Automat Ventures. Automat Ventures mm -hmm. invests in AI and machine learning powered enterprise software. Tetiana is a global facilitator of uh, Techstars. She's also an um, advisor at Startups Online Expert Evaluator at the Ukrainian Startup Fund. Giuseppe is, uh, is a managing chairman of the board of uh, InnoGest Capital. He's uh, past his top, uh, top executive in Fortune 100 corporates. Today he's successfully investing in technology and healthcare startups. Uh, InnoGest is currently the largest venture capital firm in Italy focused on seed and early stage ventures with uh, over 170 million capital under management. So um, with, with these amazing people here, we're continuing our startup challenge with the next startup. Uh, I would like to invite here um, Medicine, which with uh, Lessie Rossi. Mm -hmm. Medicine is, um, has developed a connected care solution, Medicine Suit, that is configurable for any disease or condition. They provide tools for connecting different data sources and optimizing care process. Postseed 11 million company. Welcome, Lessie. Hello. Very, very nice to be here. My name is Lasse Rossi, and I'm the CEO of Medicine. Three minutes start now. Okay, thank you. Uh, the slides are not at the beginning, but I won't mind. I'm very happy to be here and tell you about our company. We are a growth company based in Finland, specialized in telehealth and connected care. Uh, there are 17 of us from a wide field, uh, from medical professionals to technology experts, all with a long experience in healthcare IT. Uh, we finished developing our solution a couple of years ago and have then signed our first major international customers, including two regions in Denmark, Nestle Health, NHS, and Linde. And with this, reaching a population of over two and a half million end users. Now, when we have our product ready, we have shown it really delivers. We are starting to ex expand more rapidly to Europe. Uh, Medics and Suite, our main product, that's a solution that I believe every medical, uh, medical professional should have now, and something that everybody will need in the future. It's a solution unique with over 100 years of combined experience from our team. It has all the tools needed to deliver remote health services. And it can be used also practically for any disease or condition. So no more point solutions, specific apps for a specific purpose, but a single platform that delivers them all. Uh, the solution really enables medical professionals to concentrate right efforts to right patients. The people who need help from medical professionals will get it, and those who can benefit from self-help and instructions will receive that. All this is done with remote vital size monitoring questionnaires and screening, and is delivered with video appointments, chats, and secure messaging. And with this, we can partly solve the big challenge healthcare is facing now in Europe and actually globally. The solution is very user-friendly and easy to adapt to different requirements. No apps, just a web link. And I think one of the perfect examples of this is our coronavirus-specific solution. It's based on our platform, but tailored from the data and information available from the The solution enables for population screening and treatment follow-up remotely without risk of infecting medical professionals or other patients. And then, with this data that, that we are using to screen and treat the patients, the data from the vital science monitoring, medical instruments, 
wearable smartwatches combined with the data from questionnaires, treatment follow-up, and so on. We really had a set of data that's extremely valuable in understanding and treating this pandemic as well as the future one. Thank you very much and thank you so much for being uh, on time. Uh, I would like to request now the jury panel to start with their questions. Who will start first? Maybe I will start. I have a question regarding the scalability of the solution because uh, I guess you are operational, you have in Finland for sure, and maybe in another country or two. Yep. Uh, but this is very much dependent on the, on the doctors that are available in town mm -hmm. or in country, and then having uh, the, the information marketed uh, among the users in that area. So how do you scale these uh, to, to multiple countries? Well, this is something that we have been focusing on right from the beginning. Uh, our founder is a medical doctor. Uh, our professionals have done projects for over 10 years in different countries. So really the backbone of the whole solution is the easy, easy configurability to different countries and different use cases. So there is no coding or needed uh, to tailor this to a specific use case. We can do it in the system, so it's really, uh, I would call a software as a service. We can really scale it up easily, and that's we Can I ask, um, please, yes. what's your payback on customer acquisition costs? How quickly do you, um, you know, without necessarily going to details, we haven't got the time, but how quickly do you get that back? Well, uh, that depends very much. The health care business is uh, a bit strange. So let's say that in the public sector, it's rather sales times or lead times. But uh, then in the private, mm -hmm. it's actually quite rapid. And with the software as a service model, we get it extremely fast back. And now with uh, everything happen happening in with coronavirus, and telehealth really booming, uh, things are moving forward very nicely. So Thank you. my, my question, question <clears throat> yeah, so so first, I mean, I, good presentation. I saw the references on your website and I was impressed by, you know, the range of your support from students all the way to, you know, healthcare workers. Um, but one of the things in addition to scalability is rollout, right? And so when you look at, uh, basically the adoption uh, and challenges of customers being able to use it and the training or what they would need to know as well as the healthcare professionals. What does that look like in terms of, of process and challenges that they're facing to, to start using the product? Thank you, well, Ali. This was the last question. Please go ahead. Yep. Yeah. Well, of course, this is a point very important, especially at the moment when the healthcare workers are very busy with treating their patients. So we need to have, and we have a solution that's really easy to roll out. And we are getting actually very good feedback from our, our customers. One of the big ones uh, being a global corporation is rolling this out in different countries. And they have their, uh, and we are getting very good feedback now from the two, two first countries where the users are very, very happy uh, with the experience and the idea that they actually, the system is so simple to use that it kind of teaches the user on, on how, how to use it, and we are not expect, getting uh, problems with that at all. Thank you so much. Thank you for, for taking part in the challenge, and please stay with us um, until the last, uh, the last word is set. Now I would like to invite our last um, uh, startup and competitor in this, um, in this today's program, Felipe Boratini from uh, Dantelin. I'm, I'm expecting uh, Felipe to join us. Uh, in the meantime, a few words. The Dante Link combines artificial intelligence and sharing economy principles to democratize access to healthcare. Felipe, the floor is yours. Until now, we had uh, participants from, from Silicon Valley and from uh, Finland, I guess. I, I, was, I was hearing everything. I was just with the video off. I'm sorry, I didn't notice. Wonderful. Where are you from? I'm from Brazil originally. Brazil. All right, okay. so um, let's. the floor is yours. We will be having three minutes. Let's start now. Thank you. Uh, so uh, I'd like to thank you all for your time and attention and for the opportunity of pitching the solution at Webit. My name is Felipe Burattini, and I'm the founder and CEO of Tendling, a sharing economy solution to democratize access to healthcare. 
Dandelion was launched in April of 2018 in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And we have organically acquired so far more than 4,000 patients and 800 doctors from more than 60 different specialties with a capacity of helping more than 40,000 people every month. The need for our solution arose because according to the World Health Organization, less than half of the world's population has access to basic health services. Every year, 800 million people spend at least 10% of their household budget on doctors and 100 million people are pushed into extreme poverty due to unexpected health costs. It's time for us to accept that inequalities are not a footnote to the health problems we face. They are the major health problem. At Dandelion, we believe that health should be a basic right for everyone. So our challenge was not only to know how we can improve things for the poor, but mainly how can we get everyone's health up to the standard of the riches without anyone having to worry about their financial health. And our answer was through sharing economy. We realized that by dividing the real cost of health equally among all users in our community, it would be possible to give unlimited access to primary care for everyone for no more than 50 euros a month. But sometimes it's not only about grand vision, it could be more about grand adjustment. And with the crisis uh, brought by the pandemic, the challenge changed, and we had to adapt our product to help as much as we could in the fight against COVID-19. And if there is something that we've learned during the pandemic, is that the key to living in society is empathy and connectedness. So we optimized our product to bring people together and build communities of doctors and patients willing to help each other. With that, we can not only help by keeping people away from hospitals so doctors on the front line can better direct their efforts to what they really need to, but also by providing a way for people to get instant care, both physical and psychological, whenever they need it, in person or from the comfort of their homes through video consultations. And since our solution is completely decentralized, it is easier and faster to scale and replicate it in different markets. Before I finish, I wanted to say that Dandelion believes that it's possible to live in a world where everyone knows that the well-being of others is as important as ours and where health has finally become a basic right. Now it's time for us to build it together. After all, a dream that is dreamed alone is just a dream, but a dream that we dream together becomes reality. Thank you for your time and attention, and I hope you enjoyed our service. Thank you, and thank you for uh, making it possible. So um, for the jury, um, Felipe had um, a technical problem. Actually, yes. not him. We had, <laughs> but it didn't. It didn't say at all by his behavior. So he that adds points to the marketing of the company because he didn't uh, stop for a second. He did his own presentation without the slides. And Felipe, please accept my apologies for the fact no that problem. I couldn't run this, the slides for you. Uh, to everyone, but uh, now let's have the questions. Uh, who will start with the questions? Tatiana or? Oh, sure, gladly. Uh, yeah, thank Felipe, you very much. Thank you for the presentation. Oh, sorry, I will leave uh, women first, as we said. <laughs> Stop emphasizing my gender, but thank you. <laughs> um, thank you for the presentation. Um, I mean, healthcare for everyone, for sure. At the same time, I'm very impressed with your business model. I mean, the way how you approach, um, I would say, healthcare with economy of scale, right? And you say yeah. that you are right now rolled out in Brazil. Is that correct? Exactly. I mean, I'm primarily interested in um, how would you approach other markets where healthcare works differently? And what's your plan for, I mean, your rural strategy? Thank you. Yes, um, to be honest, the company was founded in Germany. And uh, since I'm Brazilian, I know the market, but not just that, I decided to focus on extreme. So, we thought that by focusing on a market that has so many problems, such as Brazil, it would be way easier to replicate to markets where the, the healthcare system is more stable, let's say so. So it, the other way around, I think I would have way more problems to get a system like the German system and try to replicate in Brazil where 80% of the population is uninsured. You wait six months to get consultations at the public service, health service. So it was an urgent need. And since I lived for a long time, both in, in Germany and Italy and et cetera, by my own experience, I can see uh, it being pretty easy to replicate. We are gathering communities and doctors, uh, private doctors from different companies and et cetera, and making them available for everyone for 
uh, fixed price, basically. Just continuing on this question, um, uh, is there any technical differentiator for, for your solution? Because it's pretty uh, unique in terms of concept, you know, the sharing economy applied to health systems. But what about the technological differentiation so that you can defend from competition? Uh, we, the technology part of our product, I tend to see as a tool, not the, the main part. I think the biggest strength of our product uh, is the, the community, the building the community itself. Uh, I come from a formation of uh, human-centered design at HPI Academy, the school in Stanford as well. So I always try to put humans on center, focusing on the problem to build a better solution instead of focusing on my solution to work the problem around it to fit it. So the technology we've been using to be completely fair is nothing that is extremely new. We combined a lot of things together like artificial intelligence for uh, early diagnosis or to contain uh, fraud. Uh, we have uh, our system of splitting all the bills and paying the doctors what they need and charging the community what they have to be charged and the scheduling consultations as well. And now we are increasing the pro uh, improving the product by, for instance, offering the possibility of uh, of medicine uh, prescriptions through via app, so digital uh, prescriptions and etc. So we constantly look at the community, check their needs, and we try to adapt to that. Instead of give uh, a product that is already ready for the community, but maybe they wouldn't want it. So answering, I'm sorry that it took me so long, but for us, it's better to build something that everyone will use. That's why we focus on the problem than to have a great technology around it and no one actually needs it. So we are really human-centered. Everything we've built was with constant iteration with doctors, patients going to hospitals, checking their needs. And that is, I would say it's our biggest differential, not the technology itself. Are you building for profit or are you building for impact? We are social... Uh, startup we do focus on profits but it's not our main goal we we see that if you have a problem as big as as the one we are trying to solve uh the profit itself is a consequence if you build a product that is good enough to fulfill the needs of the people that you are targeting it to so our goal is not profit we are not profit oriented but of course we want to be profitable we have plans of becoming a unicorn our plans uh, of being profitable we are still not we launched recently but we are getting there uh but yes we we focus on profits but it's not what uh, drives us okay we stop here uh felipe the long answers doesn't give you too much of advance but uh, still please go ahead for shorter but sharper i would say that would be yes. playing a better 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 for you uh next time we shall be having also um uh, someone from our community who will be reflecting on the startup pitches and will be giving live feedback after the pitch is done uh what are what were the strengths and 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 and, uh, and cons of of the pitches so that all the startups who listen now to us we have around the 1600 people uh, at the live stream currently uh will be well informed of how they can improve their own pitches but beyond all you, you're all done great today and uh, i'm very grateful it's unfair competition i would say because the first two startups uh had a um 10 plus million investments, while Felipe is here with uh, a little bit of post seats of uh, 350k. So it's it's not a fair fair comparison, I understand, but life is not fair. So um, uh, don't forget, dear jury members, that now I would like to request for your quick but uh, very strict and, and very to the point uh, overview of uh, of the uh, of all the startups. Help them understand what are their strengths and weaknesses, because that's the whole idea. And don't forget, I already have most of your of your vets and uh, uh, whatever you do, you should know that uh, currently you're not investing your money, you're investing my money. So uh, please, <laughs> please be honest. <laughs> so um, let's start again with uh, Tatiana. Tatiana, could you please tell us what is your um, uh, what, what is your feedback for the three startups and uh, who do you think should win? Huh. <laughs> I think it's you who should be announcing the winner, right? I mean, I should be keeping my neutrality. 
Um, a quick feedback for everyone. I mean, um, I truly believe, I mean, all those three pro three companies are fantastic. And especially in this time, they are tackling the most of the hardest challenge of them all, healthcare. Um, for, for the first one, Omnilabs, I think here is distribution is the key. I mean, I mean they have a great, um, great advantage that, they, that the company 3D prints all the details and assembles, assembles in US and locally. Yes, but at the same time, um, distribution, I mean, uh, partnerships and uh, sales, actually, that's actually what drive the success. And again, I think, I, I mean, I'm, I have been doing the marketing research for the, for the, for the market of the, of the robotics, um, I mean, for this specifically issue. Um, and I mean, I mean, say that market is very crowded or there is a lot of competition, how to spend out. I mean, yes, to be present in the, in the media is great, but I think there is something more needed. Quickly, I know that'll take time. Um, the second one, guys, guys from Finland, um, Medicine, right? I hope I pronounce correctly. Again, it's a very tricky industry because living in Nordics, I know that um, there are more and more companies looking into the uh, one, I mean, peer to peer healthcare or whatever it's called. Um, and again, there is, a, there is a big potential, but um, at the same time, I mean, knowing how is actually structured, I mean, who is actually the customer? Is the private hospitals, the state hospitals, or how, what, is, what are the way to approach the chicken egg problem? It's always there. And the last but not least, stand line. Uh, here, I mean, my, my biggest concern is the different economies and different actually healthcare systems and how to how to tackle with the subsidized um, a country or countries with subsidized healthcare and this community approach. But actually, who is getting money? I mean, what's the business model there? Is it doctors who are, who are paid or is it actually um, the hospitals who are, who are reimbursed for the doctor's time? I mean, here, this part was not clear, but I believe the, in the uniqueness of the approach. And definitely, I mean, uh, a big, big luck to everyone and thanks for the great presentations. Thank you so much, Tatiana. Um, maybe, maybe Ali? Absolutely. So uh, I'll first request off, a shorter, shorter uh, wrap up, please, if possible. Sure. So with, with Omni Labs, uh, I mean, I think it was quite interesting. I think one of the challenges that they're going to be facing is actually the just in time ordering that they said they had. I mean, in this day and age with COVID, I mean, you're clearly seeing supply chain issues and you're seeing people have uh, a very strong preference for time that it gets to them. And if you're going to be only placing the order once uh, the order comes into you, it might actually take you a while to actually fulfill that order. So I think that's going to be one of the challenges where every day counts right now. Um, and then of course, just the scalability of, of just the robotics aspect um, does, does add some challenges. Um, in terms of medicine, which was uh, based in Finland, I think they um, did have a very impressive rollout. I think they're, they're definitely delivering uh, a lot of life changing um, aspects right now um, I you know they did mention 2.5 million end users and so I think this was uh, quite impressive and seemed very quick to actually be able to roll out I think the the big thing here is going to be the training aspects for doctors and, and how long and how much they can compress that timeline to ensure that doctors aren't spending time that they need right now in terms of learning this product and challenges around that I think um, with dandelion I, I do think it was a very impressive idea um, and I and I don't know entirely what the, the rollout and traction has been today uh, but having lived in Brazil I mean there is a very clear need for this in the market and the most important part I think here is getting critical mass and you're not probably going to get that by going individual to individual because the cost of acquisition on a user basis is going to be too high and so I think a very clear strategy on b2 b2 C, and finding communities to go after and having them join this is going to be critical for success, but I think it has a very high potential to solve a need in the, in the Brazilian market. Thank you very much. And uh, next, uh, Andreas, please. Yes, I'll keep it, I'll keep it short. So I think um, Omnilabs, uh, you know, very impressive, like the others said, I think uh, one thing to get right, probably, uh, one thing on your mind, I assume, is the right split between hardware and software revenues. So I think I think that we haven't spoken about it, but I think that's something that comes to my mind. Uh, you know, where are you actually making your profits, and um, and and how how, how what's your pricing policy and on on those two um, areas are. Um, on 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 uh, on medic scene, uh, I think 
given the number of telemedicine uh, startups that are popping up in all the countries and whatever market you are entering, there's, go there's bound to be one already there in bed with the local main healthcare provider. So I think the main challenge there is competition. And there I would, I would have a philosophy of unashamedly B2C, ease of use, um, a very sort of simple uh, UX, uh, both for the, for the consumers, I mean, for the, for the patients, as well as for the doctors on both sides. It's got to be, I think, a, a, a B2C app, uh, fully, fully uh, uh, trained on that, rather than sort of have this kind of um, uh, semi uh, B2B still in mind, because otherwise adoption is going to be a difficulty. Um, and thirdly, I think, um, uh, Dandelin, I think you guys have a sort of what I would call a typical Berlin approach, um, which is a sort of open source approach uh, to everything, to life. Uh, and that's great, and I think I think you should you should continue on that because I think there is far too little um, uh, at the beginning of the 21st century of that, and that will grow uh, uh, very much for the next years. I think that that sort of philosophy. Um, so that's great. Thank you, Andreas. And uh, last, Giuseppe, Beppe, could you please share your thoughts? Yeah. So starting with Omni. I would say for, for sure there is a big potential, uh, but also big challenges on the hardware and the capital intensity required to have a success there. So I think that there is a need to focus much more on that front. Uh, Medicine, uh, for sure a long experience by the team, so they know their stuff. Uh, I think it would be challenging anyway to, to get out uh, of, their, of their home market or not the markets, as Andreas said. So I, I think I agree with this, uh, with this point uh, on that front. Dandelin, uh, I think it's a very, very unique uh, idea, you know, applying circular economy to, to the health system. So I really like that. I think it will be a challenge to replicate uh, in a few other countries. So they need to, to find their way to get there. But in my opinion, uh, overall, it was uh, the, the presentation I like the most. So I also gave you my opinion, <laughs> the only one. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, uh, I, see, I see the jury members and what they say uh, but also I see what they put as, as numbers, uh, vetting the team capacity, project scalability, business approach, the marketing approach, and the uniqueness of the idea. And um, the numbers actually are very close. The three startup has done, have done great job, obviously, and um, um, it, will be, it will be a tough choice between the three. Uh, it was only me to add my numbers here, and I did it um, on a separate note. And um, I would say that there is only one winner. And it's always like this. And I, and I have to say who is the winner now. And um, I know that you are all waiting for that. And uh, I don't see all of you live. Uh, I don't see Tukbu from Omni, Omni Alap. All right, you're back. OK, so now I see the three of you. Uh, and you have a good reason to be smiling because you, you really have done a great job. All of you have done a great job. And I think that uh, what you have managed to, to create and what you represent here is, is a phenomenal. And uh, that's why the numbers, that's why you've managed to raise so many rounds, except for the last startup. That's why you're building up and, and you're winning awards. And the winner is... Drumroll. <laughs> Medicine. Ooh. Congratulations, Medicine. I tell you why you won. The jury members, all of them collectively, committed to the last startup, Felipe. I put my weight personally <laughs> on. Uh, oh, well, it's actually uh, didn't cut matter at all. My, with my <laughs> bets. And only one point more to Medicine at the end of the day. I know that this is uh, also the first, the first startup was very close. So now what I will do is I will do something that never done before at Webit for 12 years. Uh, you, Felipe, will get a wild card to Webit 
and you will get also a free access plus opportunity to fight for the $1 million award, plus the opportunity to network with all thousand plus investors. But here I will be congratulating Lassie Rossi. Lassie, congratulations. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm very happy and impressed with this. So thank you. Thank you so much for all of you. Thank you for being with us. Special thanks to our jury members I'm very respectful of your time and your commitment and your impact. We had good representation of, uh, of Europe and beyond. Uh, and we had amazing startups from Silicon Valley, from Finland and from Berlin, originally from Brazil. Now it's time to say goodbye. And um, it will be for short though. Tomorrow again, same time, we have the Webit hour, which is now Webit two hours. Uh, with truly amazing uh, participants on a topic of how to leverage COVID, how to leverage COVID on the future of work and education with Professor Marope from UNESCO, with participants from all around the world, uh, Minister of Education from Bangladesh, professors and other global leaders talking about the future of work and education. And next week, next week is even more exciting. We have Tim Draper, joining us for a talk on uh, the impact of COVID-19 of uh, over investments and the venture capital industry. And we have on 23rd of April, on 22nd of April, we're having the father of internet, Vint Cerf, Dr. Vint Cerf, joining us together with um, the, uh, the head of our program of uh, speaking about geopolitics and the impact of COVID-19 on this. And there are some more exciting uh, events coming up next week. Stay tuned. There is a huge surprise waiting for all. Now I would like to thank all the participants who are with us. The first part with Senator, with our guests from, from uh, India and uh, Brazil. And the second part with the amazing uh, and uh, uh, Europe and the second part with the amazing startups, founders and with the jury, the honorable jury of investors. Now. All I have to say is 